we plan to kick things off as we talk about the National Investment Fund. Well, fixed income bonds of the National Investment Fund Holding Company Limited, that's the NIF, will be offered to institutions and individuals with the objective of raising approximately uh, $4 billion TT dollars. The finance minister describes it as the best investment provided by government in quite some time. Persons, nationals and non-nationals alike are invited to invest and can expect high interest rates and tax-free benefits. Joining us on set to break it down to clarify any misconceptions, we have economist Dr. Val Miki Arjun. Good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. So let's begin by you helping us to understand exactly what a bond is and what is the National Investment Fund all about. Okay, so first of all, when a company wants to raise funds, they want to raise money, they can do so primarily in two ways, through debt and through equity. Yes. Now, if you go to the capital market and you, um, in, in terms of debt, that's where you are, uh, the entity would therefore issue a bond. Now, a bond is essentially a financial instrument where, let's say, I need... Uh, $10,000. So I go to you um, and I sell you this bond f um, and you give me $10,000 for it. But periodically, let's say every year, I have to pay you an interest rate or a coupon rate then. So I give you a fixed rate, a fixed coupon rate. Let's say it might be uh, $45 uh, per, per year. And then at the very end of the, uh, uh, of the, um, the what, what we call the maturity when the bond matures uh, or the bond expires, uh, that's when I have to pay you back that uh, face value of the bond, which is the $10,000 that I initially borrowed from you. So each year, let's say for a period of five years, uh, if the bond matures in five years, each year for five years, I will pay you an interest rate of, let's say, $45. And then uh, on the very last year, I pay you the last $45 together with the $10,000 that I initially uh, borrowed from you. That's simply how the bond works. Okay, so what is, what is the National Investment Fund Arrangement all about? So the National, uh, the, the National Investment Fund Arrangement, essentially um, the government, as we're well aware, is, is owed uh, money um, due to the CLECO bailout, the CL financial bailout. And uh, as a result of this, what they've done is um, budget, set the budget in such a way that $4 billion is going to be required uh, in order to meet part of the expenditure obligations for this particular fiscal year. Now, they hope to finance that part of the, of the budget um, using the NIF. How are they going to do so? Several assets, in particular the shares of certain companies, are being transferred from Clico. So, for example, shares in, in a Republic Bank, in Angostura uh, Holdings Limited. Um, there's also 100% of TGU that is also be going to be transferred to the, to, uh, to the fund uh, among others. And um, the, these shares <coughs> represent um, asset ownership, not officially now by the government, but officially now by a separate entity, which is called the National Investment Fund. Right? It's important to understand that the NIF is a separate entity, legal entity that is from the state, from the government. Now, that being said, the sole shareholder then of the, of the NIF is the Ministry of Finance then. And, basically the state. So if you own shares, at the end of the year, the company pays you dividends. Mm. So it's the same thing here. And the NIF is owning a substantial amount of Republic Bank shares. It's owning 100% of TGU. It's owning, I think it's 12% of Angostura. 12% sorry, of the portfolio in the NIF belongs to, to, to Angostura as well. Um, so when these companies generate profits, the after tax, uh, their after tax profits, part of that is allotted to dividends, is paid out as dividends yeah. to the shareholders. So these dividends are going to therefore be paid, part of it will be paid to the NIF. The NIF in turn will be using that money to repay the bondholders. Now, initially, uh, 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 which, which is what, what, what uh, has happened a few days ago and will continue to happen in, in the near future, um, individuals will, and, in, and institutions as well will be able to purchase bonds. Now, as I indicated earlier, the bond is essentially like a loan, okay? So th the government needs four billion, four billion TT dollars. So therefore, the NIF is going to issue a bond for four billion TT dollars. How are they going to repay that bond? <clears throat> They're going to repay that bond by using the dividend income that is received from these various companies over the next several years. Um, in addition to this, 
what happens, let's say, if in one year, in 2019, for example, they need to repay $1 million um, worth of interest then to, to the bondholders. But let's say they receive about $1.5 million in, in, in dividend income. What happens to that extra 500000 Because you only have to pay $1 million to the bondholders in interest. Mm -hmm. That extra 500000 is going to go into a sinking fund. Yeah. And that sinking fund is to be used to A, meet interest payments should in one year companies have a, a bad financial year and they're not able to meet sufficient dividend payments to the NIF in order for the NIF to in turn pay the interest income to the bondholders and B, it will also be used to pay the principal amount, that face value amount that we spoke about earlier when the bond matures or the bond expires. Let's talk about the level of credit worthiness of this particular debt obligation compared to other debt obligations in the Caribbean. Right. The well, the CARI Chris, our local regional rating agency, has given it a double A rating, mm -hmm. which is a, a very good rating, excellent rating. But the the um, it's one notch uh, above a triple A, I believe, because the government has not guaranteed this particular bond. But that I need mean, to say the um, if they did guarantee the bond, what would happen? is that our contingent liabilities portion of our, of our net debt, uh, our national debt, will actually go up. Contingent liabilities refer to that aspect of debt, um, not taken on by the government per se, but taken on by a separate public entity, uh, state-owned entity then, um, their debt that is guaranteed by the government. So let's say, for example, another example of contingent liabilities, let's say, let's say um, uh, Petrochen takes on debt uh, of, of $10 billion, and the government will say, okay, well, we'll guarantee $2 billion of that. So if, if you can't meet some of your debt, we'll at least step in to pay a maximum amount of $2 billion. So in this case, um, if the government were to guarantee the payments by the NIF, then what's going to happen is that it will send up our national debt uh, by that particular guaranteed amount. Understood. But the, what we have to remember is the quality of the companies. Um, in this particular NIF, the quality of the portfolio of shares in the NIF, where you have 55% of that portfolio is, is Republic Bank alone. Mm -hmm. um, now, that's a good thing um, and potentially a bad thing at the same time. 55% is it's a good thing because it's Republic Bank. Republic Bank has been performing quite well yeah. uh, within the last three years. They've made profits of net profits of about 1.1 billion after tax, right, on average. Um, However, it's a very high concentration risk. And what do we mean by that? Again, 55% of that portfolio is Republic Bank. Now, Republic Bank and, and all private corporations at the same time, they're not immune from cyclical shocks. I mean, what if we have another repeat of a financial crisis in 2008? What if they have a, a, a poor financial uh, year for one reason or the other, and they're not able to make their dividend payments? Uh, uh, so in that case, the NIF would be receiving much less dividend income because yes. again 55 percent of the shares uh, in the nif are republic bank so what they would have to do there in this particular case is tap into the sinking fund and, and and possibly at some point they they and we do expect this to happen uh when they have to pay the principal payments at the end they will have to engage in some form of refinancing um so the 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 worse off the financial performance of the company, the greater the likelihood that the NIF will have to engage in some form of refinancing in order to pay off uh, not just the, the interest, but also the, the, the principal amount. So this is, another, this is um, just one issue that we, one of the issues that we, we have to take into account as well with respect to the NIF. But there are, there are a lot more spin-off issues that we could think about, mm -hmm. both benefits and, and some potential risks as well. So if we think about the, uh, the benefits, of course, the NIF is giving us more interest, yes. uh, sub in, in some cases, substantially more interest relative to other investment opportunities that are available in our local financial market. And how does that affect other financial institutions? Right. Well, let's, let's take, for example, the capital market. The, the capital market, as I indicated earlier, is made up of the bond market and the equity market. Yes. Now, depending on the, the, ex, the level or the extent of subscription to the NIF bond, um, what you could find is that um, in some instances, individuals may want to, to, to take their money out of the, the stock market or take their money out of, let's say, for example, um, government treasuries, government bonds. Remember, the NIF bond is not a government bond. They're two separate things. So 
they may say, okay, well, the, the five-year NIF bond is paying us an interest rate of 4.5%, but the government bond is paying us an interest rate of 3.5%, and the 3.5% is actually taxed, whereas yes. the NIF bond, 4.5% is tax-free. Yes. So they may want to sell off the government bond mm -hmm. in order That's to be able to purchase the NIF bond. Now, if there's a mass selling off of the government bond, mm -hmm. then that bond price is going to drop. Right. So the price of government treasuries is going to drop. Yes. If there's a mass selling off of equities, the price of equities is going to fall yes. so in order for them to be able to purchase the, the, the NIF bond. And, and, and what, what I think would be very interesting is to see how, how would commercial banks react um, in, in going forward. Is it that, that, that they're going to want to try to ramp up the level of competition by increasing their interest rates offered? Mm -hmm. Because at this point, the average interest rate offered uh, in the commercial banking sector is just about 0.6%. Now, when you take into account that the value of money tends to drop over time because of in, uh, in inflation, then you, right now we have an inflation rate of about 1.1%. The interest that you earn in a deposit in a commercial bank is on average 0.6%. Mm. If you take, so the interest 0.6% minus the inflation rate of 1.1%, that leaves you with a real interest rate of negative 0.5% which means you're effectively losing money, not gaining interest, but you're losing money when you take into account the fact that inflation deteriorates the purchasing power or the value of your money over time. So if you look at other uh, investment opportunities, like, like I indicated earlier, the, the example of the government bond, yes. the government bonds are still paying uh, approximately 1% less interest than what the NIF bonds are paying. But when you factor in, but government bonds, the interest are, is going to be taxed. Yes. The NIF interest is not being taxed. Mm -hmm. Then the overall net effect is that you're, you're going to be earning more than, much more than 1% uh, on the NIF bonds as well. However, um, what we have to consider is that, let's say, for example, um, in the next few years, the economy continues to, um, to ramp up in economic activity. Whether that happens is another debate. Um, but at one point, let's say inflation goes up to 5% but you invested in a five-year bond. Right. So that five-year bond is giving you an interest rate of 4.5%. Four, four so, yeah. so you're going to be um, having a real interest of negative 0.5%. Mm -hmm. So all of these are, are possibilities that we need to keep in mind. But I think, um, I think going forward, overall, we, um, the, the main benefit is mm -hmm. that the interest rate of the NIF bonds is, is substantially higher than, than many avenues what, than, of what you can earn in, in, in our financial market. So, so let's talk a little bit about who really stands to benefit from this. They said that it's open to the average man on the street, but the question is, is there some sort of system in place to regulate how much the average man has access to and how much the wealthy business people? Um, well, to the extent of, of the regulation aspect of it, um, I'm not aware of, of what measures has been put in place, but regulation of the capital market as a whole mm -hmm. is, is, is undertaken by the Securities and Exchange Commission. So I think that, that will primarily fall under their purview at the end of the day. What we also have to keep in mind is that um, these, these bonds can be bought and sold on At the secondary time. bond market. Mm -hmm. So let's say you purchase a bond, one of the $1,000 bonds, um, and you want to sell that in the capital market, a benefit to you, let's say the repo rate were to go up, the central bank interest rate were to go up, right? Then, sorry, were to go down, if your interest rate were to go down, a benefit to you is that the price of that bond is going to go up. So you can sell it at a premium, make a profit on your investment, yes. right? If, if the interest rate were to drop, right? Um, sorry, were to increase, and in, in the opposite case, if the interest rate were to increase, then that means the price of the bond will drop. So if you wanted to go buy the bond, you buy it at a cheaper price. It will fall below $1,000. And in your closing comments, how successful do you see this bond investment being? I think it's going to be um, significantly subscribed. Uh, I certainly think that the individual investors, people like you and me and the, the man on the street, may be more interested mm -hmm. in, in purchasing uh, the five-year bond to a lesser extent the 12-year bonds because individual investors, they tend to prefer um, perhaps more the shorter term investment because that exposes them to less interest rate risk and it exposes them to less inflation risk. The inflation rate we, uh, risk, we spoke about it uh, a bit before. I think more of the 20-year bond will be more subscribed by the institutions, the institutional investors. Wonderful. Well, it's been a pleasure chatting with you. Thank you so much. You educated us uh, indeed, and we really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. We've been chatting with economist Dr. Valmiki Arjuna, talking to us there about the National Investment Fund, giving us a 
uh, Economics 101. Thank you very much. We take a short break. A lot more when we return. Stay tuned.